Hello there YouTube, this is Octo, and today we're going to make a bucket plugin that gets locations and teleports players to those locations. Uh, and by the end of this video, hopefully you can build your own custom locations and teleport plugins uh, based on what I've given you. It's going to be pretty simple. We're going to use some uh, methods that are already provided in the Spigot API for the most part, uh, such as teleport and location. Uh, so that, you know, just take it easy, enjoy this one, because uh, the next one's going to be a little bit more complicated with set blocks and data values, so that will give you an easy one to start off. So let's jump into it. There we go. Bring up our Eclipse. We are in Hello World 2, and we are going to want to go to my first listener. Here we go. So we're going to go ahead and create a new event handler here so that we can write a new method public void on player damage all right and we're gonna look for entity damage by entity event there you go import this there it is right there and we'll get our brackets in Boom, there we go. So every time a player is damaged by an entity, that is an arrow or a mob or any other player, is going to teleport them uh, somewhere on the map. I haven't quite decided yet. We'll pick a regular location, probably something nearby to where they started. And so this will kind of be like a uh, maybe a knockback. It could knock them back. Well, we'd have to get direction. So probably going to be a little bit more like um, just a random teleport. For a certain number of blocks. All right, so what we need to do first is make sure that it is indeed a player um, being damaged here, and not just a, another mob, because you can see it's entity damage, not player damage. So what we're gonna do here if event. Actually, first we should get the entity. So entity entity equals event dot get entity. Give it a second here to load up. There we go. And we'll need to import entity. There it is, that one right there, bucket. And then we'll check if the entity is an instance of player, like how we did in the last episode. Uh, we checked to make sure the command sender was a player. This time we'll be checking if the entity damaged is a player. So if it is a player, then we're going to cast it to a player. So player player equals player entity. And there you go. Now we've got a player version of entity. And we're simply going to teleport them. So player dot teleport. There you go. And we're going to need to put in a location here. Okay. So we're going to call it loc. And that's going to be a new variable. So we could get the player location right off the bat just by typing in location uh, player loc because it's not going to be the one we use in the teleport equals player dot get location you can see a lot of this is already built into the API which is why I said it's fairly simple import location there from bucket so now we've got the player's location and say we want to teleport them 10 blocks away when they're hit All right, so we're going to do location loc equals new location and this is going to be actually we don't need to do a new location we can just type player loc dot add and we can add in uh, x y and z amount to edit the location we already have so whatever the player's location is we can either increase it by 10 in the x which is uh, one direction like horizontally, 10 in the Z, which is another direction horizontally, or 10 in the Y, which is vertical. You gotta remember that, X, Y, and Z, just like the coordinates you see when you press F3 in game. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just do 10 in the X direction, uh, maybe 10 in the Z direction, so it's a diagonal 10. Uh, whatever the hypotenuse is of a 10 by 10. Alright, so 
that's how far you'll travel. And player teleport to that location, straightforward. You could randomize these numbers as well if you use uh, Java's random. Uh, that's what I like to do if I like a random jump sort of teleport. All right, so this should work, I believe, just as it is. Uh, every time a player gets hit, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So we're going to export our plugin here. There we go. Get the plugin YML to construct. Perfect. And I've already got it up and loaded here, as you can see. So we're just going to reload it. You usually I type in slash reload, but you type re regular just reload straight into the uh, console there, and you'll get the same effect. And it'll tell you that it's not good for some plugins. That's true. Once we start working with more complex things like uh, lists, hash maps, uh, config files, stuff like that, you will want to be careful about reloading. All right. And now that we're in. You can see I've got my sword on me, my King Midas sword, and we're here. I'm going to go ahead and enter game mode 1 and grab myself a zombie, perhaps. Let's see. Uh, zombie, perfect. We're going to go ahead and change it to night. Uh, I thought sorry, zombie doesn't burn up. Uh, let's see. What is the command? Set. Time set 20,000. Will that do it? Yes, perfect. All right. Oops. And difficulty needs to be above peaceful. There we go. Hard. Excellent. All right. And we're going to go back into game mode one. And, or zero, I mean. This is survival. When the zombie hits us, since we're a player, it should tell if us far away, um, 10 blocks away. But it should not do so when the zombie is hit by us. There we go. See, you can see I've been teleported far away. There you go. Kind of like a knockback effect, sorta. If if you're really clever and you know how to work with um, vectors, you can get the direction the player is facing and do an opposite vector in the opposite direction that is, and teleport them kind of like as a knockback, which I think is a cool effect. So see, if we hit him, he doesn't teleport, but if he hits us, we get sent far away. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, so let's head back to Eclipse here. Go ahead and stop this. Okay, so now, say we want to teleport them to a very specific location. We already know the coordinates of the exact spot we want to teleport them to. Uh, we want to build this location now. Since we can't just get the location here in the code, we have to actually put in the coordinates because that's the part of the information we have. We can do that. You can build it from scratch with doing a new location. So when the um, the player is damaged here, we're going to go ahead and instead of getting their location and teleporting them 10 blocks in either direction, we're going to create a location that is just a new location, just like that. All right, and we will need to put in, as you'll see here, world double 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 or world double 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 float float. And the first one, straightforward, that's the world you're in. Then the next three, the doubles, are x, y, and z. Uh, you can put in an integer and it will convert to a double uh, fairly easily. And the last two, um, the optional float parameters you see there, those are for pitch and yaw. Uh, pitch and yaw determine the direction you're looking. So you can find those in F3 as well, but they're uh, less often used. All right? um, even in regular in-game teleports, it's not really important. Uh, I don't suggest bothering with them unless you know the exact pitch and yaw of um, the teleport location you want to send them to. So if you build a teleport plugin and you somehow saved the exact um, pitch and yaw of that um, location, you could then input it there and you would be able to get the exact spot you were looking at. Um, that's why even when you use like a warp plugin, you still look at the exact same spot. But our teleports here will be looking. Uh, at a predefined pitch and yaw. That's just something to note. Um, we can work on it in the future if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments. Alright, so now all that aside, we're going to build this new location here. We're going to get the player's world. Alright, so this is assuming we only have one world. Otherwise, we would have to build the world, which we'll do here in a second. So player.getWorld. And you know what? I'm actually going to make that its own variable world world equals 
player.get world and import world from bucket. Perfect. Right. So now we've got the world. We can type world in right there. And we're going to teleport them to, let's say, um, we have a spot we like at 150 um, and it's what, um, 10 high and it's 200 blocks in the Z direction. There you go. So now, technically, this will take us somewhere. We could add a pitch in y'all, like I was saying, just like that, but that's this will do fine. So we'll go ahead and save that. So every time we get hit, it should send us to this predefined location. Of course, we could change the um, event as well. It could be a command, even if you want. You could put it in here. We'll probably do that next. All right, so let's give this a shot. Okay, so I'm in the server. I'm gonna go ahead and reload it. Now that it's uploaded, perfect. All right, spawn the zombie there, and when he hits us, it should take us to a, a predefined spot. You'll notice um, our current X Y Z is nowhere near the one we put in. So as soon as he hits us, you can see now we've been teleported to 150, 10, 200, and we dropped down because we didn't have 10 high up there. Um, you have to keep that in mind when you're doing Y coordinates that it has to they'll drop from wherever they are if it's too high up but we have a success All right. so back here we're gonna go ahead and craft another world say we want to send them to the nether instead so if you get hit you get sent to the nether or actually this time what we'll do is we'll get rid of this it's no use to us right now and we will clean up our code here you have to get rid of the imports you didn't use Eclipse will let you know with the yellow line. There we go. And we're going to make a command for it. So we'll create some more space up here. And the command will be... See, it wants to go back to the correct format. But I will not let it. Alright, the case will be... Um, we'll call it nether port. Okay, so whenever someone types in nether port, it'll send them to the nether. Um, some predefined location. I'm not going to check it so it may teleport us in a wall, whatever. I'm, that's something you can deal with. Alright, okay, so when they type in nether port, they're going to get teleported to the nether. And this is how we do it. We're going to create a new world called nether, alright? And this will teleport them to a specific world. We're going to have to type in uh, get world here, or actually, this is a tricky one. Uh, world nether equals bucket dot get server dot get world uh, and it's going to be in quotations here world nether there we go we're going to have to import bucket from org bucket uh, we'll do get server here with this parentheses and get world all right so whatever the world folder name is you'll put it in here and that's the world that it'll teleport to since we want the nether it'll be world nether if you wanted um, your regular world to just be like that, the end of course is like that. If you have a custom one named, you know, my world, you could do that too. But we're going to pick the nether. There we go. So we've got this world selected. So whenever we want to do a new location, so player.teleport. Oops, here we go. Player.teleport is this new location. That is going to be location loc equals new location world or nether sorry that's the world we're in and it's going to be to zero 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 that's wherever that is we're going to teleport them there to it perfect there we go now that we've imported um location i also already imported world save it and that should do it um oh we got to return true must remember that excellent so let's go ahead and export it there we go. Get our plugin YML again. Finish that up. And go to the Minecraft server here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we're going to reload. Perfect. Alright, so now we're going to type in nether port. Oh, this is not going to work because we forgot to add it to our plugin YML. So we're going to copy this child node here. Go all the way to the beginning and paste it has to have the exact same number of spaces as um, the other command. So nether port has the description teleport to the nether. There we go. And now we can export that correctly. 
something I forget quite often, um, but the game will remind you. Reload, all right, and type another part. There we go. You can see we've been teleported to zero, roughly zero, zero, zero in the nether. Since zero is um, way down in a block, it's pushed us up to 61. But it has succeeded. It's it done exactly what we intended and sent us to the nether in this exact spot. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, now you can create teleport commands to wherever you want and exactly the world and location you want. Uh, if you're using multi-world though, please remember you do have to load the world before you teleport them to it. Otherwise, probably get some strange effects. I don't know what would happen there. I've never tried. <laughs> Just um, load the world first. All right. So that's all there is to it. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, our next video is going to be on um, setting blocks in the world. So say we wanted this block to be a diamond um, using the plugins programming. We could set it to diamond. We could set it to a command block. Whatever we wanted. And um, we'll also set data values because some blocks have multiple data values like wood. So you can't just set the block, you have to set the block and the data value. So we'll go over all that and um, get into all that tedium, fun stuff. Um, if you like this, just comment and leave a subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope you had fun. Uh, be sure to check out the quiz here coming at the end, the link. And, um, you know, let me know if you have any suggestions. Adios.